Hi everyone, this is a Commodore 16 that was given to me. The person who sent it to me told me that he found it at the landfill. He said that he took the RAM and the CPU that he needed to repair another Commodore 16. But with the missing components, I can't tell if it works or not. I could buy the missing RAM, but the A51 CPU is quite expensive and hard to find. So I found online a project that allows me to convert the 6510, the CPU of the Commodore 64, into the 8501. The 8501 and the 6510 are very similar, but some pins are shifted by one position, and the 8501 has additional input-output pins. The fact that P5 is an internal register in the 8501 bothers the mapping of the kernel. The kernel directly controls the input-output pins, the cassette, uni and the floppy drive, and they won't work until further modifications, because the 6510 in the 8501 have different input-output port mappings. But my goal is only to understand if the C16 works, in that way I can tell if it's really worth buying a $50 CPU. The Commodore 16 and the Commodore Plus 4 are two less famous computers compared to the C64, but they still have an interesting history and offer a unique perspective on the computer scene of that time. Initially, Commodore achieved great success with the Commodore PET, followed by the VIC-20 in the early 80s and the famous Commodore 64 a few years later. However, a few years later, the situation changed. While the C64 was an incredible success in the gaming and home computing sector, the production of the PET was discontinued and the VIC-20 was being phased out. This meant that Commodore essentially had only one product to offer. To tackle this challenge, Commodore started designing new computers based on a chip called TED, which stands for Text Editor. This chip would handle graphics, audio, DRAM refresh, timer and keyboard input. Initially, the plan was to use the TED chip in two different computers, the Commodore 116 and the Commodore 264. The 116 was intended to compete with the Sinclair computers, but when Jack Tromiel left the company, the plan changed. Commodore abandoned the idea of making an entire series of computers based on the TED chip, and focused on the production of the Commodore 16 and the Commodore Plus 4. These were marked as computers for home and business productivity. The Plus 4 had a high price and integrated software, although functional was not powerful enough to compete with other computers of the period. The Commodore 16 was a model similar to the Plus 4, but without the integrated software and with less memory. It was intended to be cheaper and compete with computers like the Spectrum, but did not achieve the expected success in the United States. Both computers struggled to make an impact in the gaming sector. The lack of sprites and the limited sound generation made it difficult for programmers to develop high-quality games. The most significant issue with the C16 was the limited memory. It only had 16K of RAM, and due to the compatibility with the Plus 4, many game developers aim to create games that would work on both computers. So for this reason, on the Plus 4, despite having more memory than the Commodore 16, hardly any games were developed, because the software houses wanted to reach the maximum number of users. Overall, the Commodore 16 and Plus 4 were not a great commercial success. Commodore's management, high prices, and the challenges in the gaming sector contribute to their rapid demise. However, this computer remains important in the history of computing and represents a fascinating chapter of the computer history in the 80s. As you can see, it's a bit beaten up and two keys are missing, so I really hope it works. As mentioned before, this Commodore 16 is without a CPU. The Commodore 16 uses a CPU called A501, which is expensive and hard to find. My fear is spending money on a pricey CPU for a non-functional computer that might not be repairable. So as I said before, I'll take the RAM and the CPU from my C64 and adapt them to make the 16 work. The person who gave it to me told me that it should work, so I'm going to open the Commodore to check the situation. Inside it's really dusty, the CPU and the RAM are missing and for sure work has been done on this C16, because various chips bear different writings. In addition to the CPU, I'm also considering adapting the RAM for my C64. Since one of the two is already missing, I should be able to perform a memory expansion, taking it from 16 to 64 kilobytes with some modifications. I need to remove this remaining 8KB RAM that I no longer need and connect these two chips to two other pins on the board. 
U7 and U8 are two chips called 74LS257, which are called multiplex, essential for the use of the RAM. As I increase the memory, I'll need to modify the connections of some of the pins because the board design was only for 16K, so modifications are necessary to make it work. I'll connect pin 2 of U7 to A14 and pin 14 of U8 to A15, which are the first two of these six pins. The multiplex could be connected to the processor or the PLA, but I find A15 and A14 more accessible. As for the RAM, I simply need to insert the 32KB RAMs without making any connections. I start by desoldering the multiplex and the RAM to put it in the sockets. Since I need to disconnect them, the best thing would be to use a desoldering station. Thanks to the donation I received in my previous video, I was able to purchase an affordable desoldering station. But the delivery times are very long, and it hasn't arrived in time for this project. So without a desoldering tool available, I will use flux and copper braid again for this time, as I have no other options. <laughs> I have desoldered the components, so I'll set aside the 8KB RAM that I no longer need and reuse these two multiplex. Since I'll have to bend the pins of the multiplex for convenience, I'll insert the sockets. This project is totally reversible, as I'm not cutting any traces, so at any point I could reinstall the original chips. <laughs> I insert the 32 kilobytes RAMs without any modifications, and before inserting U7 and U8 into the sockets, I straighten them, bend the pin 2 of U7 and the 14 of U8, pre-solder the wires and the pins, and after freeing the two pins A14 and A15, I can finally make the connections, and the memory expansion part is complete. piece of the track had come off in one pin, the one that carries the 5 volts. I checked it with the multimeter and there was indeed no continuity. Consulting the diagram, I saw that a resistor could be connected to this pin, so I made this bridge. Now I can proceed with the CPU. I'll use this 8500, a breadboard and some cables. As mentioned before, the 8501 and the 6510 are very similar, but shifted by one, so I connect the pins following this project scheme that I'll leave in the video description below. The project is for the 6510, but the 8500 can also be used. Then I checked one by one that the pins were positioned correctly and were well inserted following a scheme that I made.
At this point I have finished the job, hoping it works I can test it. And yes, luckily it works, showing 60k of memory. This is the final result. As you can see, it's not a permanent solution, but at least I managed to expand the memory and test its functionality even without an A501 available. If you have any questions or suggestions, please leave them in the comment. I'll leave in the description the link to the projects that I used, and I'll see you in the next video.